booming up here in the lower bracket. The Viper versus the Lord of Marines. Game number one between the Mongols and the Abyssids. Redemption semi-finals. Only four players left here. Obviously, in the winner brackets, we will have Vortex and BCQ waiting. All four of them already getting quite some points. But for one of those two, Viper or Marine Lord, the story will end here and they will have to finish fourth. The other one can still finish third, second or first. Obviously having a tough task ahead of them tomorrow. Have to win two sets in a row. This one is going to be really tight. The Viper goes for the Abbasid. Slow, boomy civilization. Marine Lord with a pretty open Ovu at the front. Might spell some aggression. Keeps himself on to wood. So will build either the barracks or the pasture. The good thing is that he's up against the Abbasids. So you're not going to get attacked, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the I'm testing the caster curse. If Viper now ram rushes in Dark Age, winner. We'll um, <laughs> but <laughs> that you presumably shouldn't. If there's any sieve that you see this generation as Marine Lord, you're like, eh, this is the sieve, right? He's like, he's gonna leave me alone. So now I have flexi options. Considering how far out my Uvu is, I probably don't want to eco boom myself. I want to find pressure. So I wouldn't be surprised if he moves out and drops a Rax very quickly and then extends out towards his opponent's base. Because one thing I have to highlight about Viper's spawn. It is not well protected or insulated against an outpost rush. In the fact, Greenlord goes for wheelbarrow. Hmm. He's Wait. going for. Yeah. He went for wheelbarrow. He's going for wow. the eco, eco approach. Yeah, that's just true because he went for the girly. That's a bit surprising, but yeah. like, I think it still can lend itself towards the early aggression. To to bring it back to the point I was trying to highlight, like if you look at the base of Viper, two outposts, possibly three, deny everything you need really. Like, you can put one either side of that wood line, that denies the second wood line as well, and then one over the gold line. All of a sudden, Viper has to invest in rams earlier than he wants to to get rid of this network. Admittedly, you can do that more cost-effective as the Abbasids because you get the tech for free, but it's still frustrating to deal with, and it might be what Marine Lord does because his playstyle we highlighted, he likes to pressure you early and then fall back for his own economy. Okay. The thing is, though, Marine Lord now with the economic approach, is that going to be a fast castle? Because this will slow down his fuel age timing so much, but actually keeps four villagers on to gold. So I don't think he will delay himself too much. No. And then, are we going to castle age? Are we trying to make a man at arm aggression happen? Wheelbarrow okay. certainly not the most common approach in this matchup. And Viper, he will be happy because no tower rush, no very early yeah. aggression in his face. Yeah, it's kind of surprising. Marine Lord, weirdly enough, in this matchup, is choosing to not play his kind of patterned and opening. And I think that's informed by his sheep. I think he got more than half, maybe like two thirds of the sheep on the map. You can actually see it, because remember, he hasn't built a pasture and he's gathering. He's still got a decent amount of reserves. This is what's informing him. It's going to be a tight timing, but I think he's just looking to boom up into possibly halfway towards castle before going on the wood. There you go. The switch across comes. So he min maxes his early eco, where most players would have already had three or four on wood. But this means that now with this timing, he's not going to run out of sheep before he gets his first pasture. He really has skirted the line, though. A lot of players would have got paranoid about this because they wouldn't have known if they were going to get enough sheep back to their base. Interesting. This is this is such a wild build order, and I will certainly rewatch that recorded game, and we'll try to figure out how Marine Lord thinks this is his approach. Now sends four villagers forward. That's mainly for deer stones. Could have moved it a bit later as well. And... I, I'm still surprised. Marine Lord stays on woods, so I would assume more pastures being dropped. I don't see him going too aggressively here. Now he needs at least two pastures now. Unless he wants to go on the berries, he won't have enough to stabilize his economy. So usually the play here is like when you have Uvu, it's two pastures, and that stabilizes you for a long time. He might be forced into three pastures by about the six, seven minute mark. That's going to stretch his economy quite a bit, but he should be able to live up to it. The issue I see is that it's giving too much breathing room to Viper. Viper is going to get what he wants, right? Like. They're not quite HRE levels, but they are up there in terms of that type of sieve. You shouldn't let do whatever the hell they want in their base. The Abbasids need some sort of pressure or power check in place to delay their timings. And right now, it feels like Viper has no delay to his base. Marine Lord is not playing pastures and has 400 woods. What? That is means Marine Lord is actually... No, he's going for a second town center himself. Wow. If he is, that is that is a spin and a half. That, that's someone that wouldn't be expected as well because Viper, he's not scouting the base, he's scouting the Uvu. 
So you know, it's like he's going to waste time. This is like Barilo is smiling right now, right? If we had ca player cameras, he'd be smiling because that's a suboptimal play. Viper has one scout trying to burn this down instead of getting vital information. He has no clue what Marine Lord is going to do. And Marine Lord essentially shows him enough to make him content. By showing the deer stone at the front, Mar Viper's like, okay, uh, I, I, this is a standard opening. I, I don't need to see any more your base. And it means that he should be able to do all of this under secrecy. And if it is the double TC play, Viper is not going to be expecting it at all. But is it that bad for him? Because he will eventually scout it, right? He will stay on the oval. He will probably uh. just move back. We'll build one town center. And then he will find the intel in like three minutes. I and don't think so. Right now, there can't be aggression, right? The earliest that could hit him would be like double archer range play that would arrive in like three minutes. Do you think the the Viper is likely to scout round to the back of your base or, or up here even? Because right now, what he's doing is he's keeping an eyeball on his own base and he's took the scout back to try and harass away the Khan because the Khan now being teched up becomes a little bit of a nuisance. So I, I almost feel like this is baiting him. We see this so frequently when you're up against the Mongols, when you have to react to the Khan, it's a suboptimal play. You need to find trades. Instead, his one scout, his only scout, is now going to waste time. And Marine Lord, he's just got him dancing to his tomb. If he follows him in a different direction, he's never seen this TC. This is now the true test of the Viper. What are his game senses? What does he think? How deep is he into this matchup? What does he get from what he scouted? Because he scouted so little, right? I wouldn't be confused if he thinks, okay, this double archer range play. This is this or that. Double TC, not really sure if that's on his list. Typically, obviously, like, both players are going for the same strategy now. Wheelbarrow? Yeah, but, like, you don't expect Viper this strategy scout, from the Mongols. The you really Where don't expect Viper's it. Where's second scout? Oh, he built us extra scouts. Uh, yeah, but he has a second TC now. So he, he waited until the second TC, so it doesn't delay him. Um, so it's not oh. as bad. Okay. But like, if you build it out of the primary TC, it, it sucks, right? Because you haven't stabilized your economy yet. But now he's going to get the info. And I think, yeah. Oh, be, he, ooh. He's, ooh, ooh, Khan Big. goes down and he sees it. He's got eyeballs on. This should pivot the strategy for Viper. This information was vital. Okay, what's the plan now? Goes for the... Straight away. <laughs> What? Why because does he, he try to make something happen in Fuel Age? Because he, he has to now. He understands like the way that this now works is Marine Lord will arrive in Castle quicker than him because he can scale it faster. And then he has a step readout and you have two TCs versus two TCs. Your villages are cheaper, but the difference is made up by the step readout. So for Viper, he smells weakness. He understands just how much this costs. Remember that most civs are paying 700 resources for their second TC. Marine Lord just paid 900. And his civ doesn't get any bonuses to, to wood gathering. Uh, certainly a big investment obviously saved the mining camp there on stone so a wild man could say 850 minus walking times feels quite balanced here with mongols but yeah certainly quite a big investment there and now archers are coming over viper is actually oh, going man. to fake some aggression no, no, the, like there's, there's no fake about it. Like, he, he wants to know what's coming. Like, when you see the second scout as well, Marine Lord now understands. He's been scouted. There's no way that two scouts from the field and they didn't see the secondary TC. And he won't get the outpost up. And that's trouble for him. He'll at least start getting the archers out. But remember that Viper already has a lead. He built double archery range and a Rax. So militarily, he will be stronger in the coming minutes than Marine Lord. Two villager lead, though, for Marine Lord here. Now one villager lead. Let's see. Scouts are coming in. Three archers versus two archers. Marine Lord still somewhere in the queue. Some harassment. And oh, it feels like Viper has to disengage here. Got quite some harassment out, but Marine Lord with a solid defense. Villager it should be saved. Yeah, the villager will pull back. But once again, the outpost isn't complete. And they just target each other down. But the scouts and the spears make the difference. He needs to actually prioritize the spear first. It's adding a lot of damage into this. And although Marine Lord is starting to get a reasonably healthy count of archers, Viper is still building more reinforcements back up in his base. I wouldn't be surprised as well, with the efficiency of fresh foodstuffs, he might even be able to afford an additional military structure to Zerg his opponent. I wouldn't also be surprised if we see a switch up into a stable soon from the Viper. Quite weird how Viper continued to build some army, and now we see the Khan being back on the field as well. Archers being micro down, Viper with quite some nice aggression. And still, the tower is not up, but more and more archers are popping. The question though, Marie Lord, did you really want to invest all that stone into archers? Or did you maybe want to save them for some crucial attacks? Look at the numbers, they're matching each other, they're both going for castle age now. 
So after all this, the aggression goes back and forth, but Viper is no closer to winning the game in his eyes now. He understands his second TC's in play. He understands that fresh foodstuffs makes him a little bit more efficient, but he also understands that we're approaching a new phase, a phase where the Mongols reign supreme because they match your ability to build siege in the field, but they get the added benefit of a landmark that juices up their gold production by 50%. That is a huge boon when you're equal economically like this. So now Viper has to make a choice. Do I double down on the investment in military or do I go for a third TC? A third TC right now feels suboptimal because your opponent's about to reach his power spike and he's going to have Yam to his favor. So Viper, he's going to have to go hard in the racks. He's going to have to start producing the man at arms and he's going to have to be fast about this move. Ah, he's setting himself up to do that. He is going for the triple barracks, double archer range. Pro so production should be flying in Viper. Soon reaching Castle Age. Goes for more archers in addition to that. Quite an interesting move. Sees a lot of archers of Marine Lord. Now the fight, but now Forest. Yep, working the advantage of Marine Lord. Marine Lord starts stepping back, does have the edge here. That's going to force Viper away. He'll maintain vision around this forest. He even has the Falcon if need be to maintain that vision, and he's going to chase him with a new arrow. Army is going to be wiped. Viper is prepping the new line of reinforcements, though. A stronger line. But I don't know. Can you make the difference with the men at arms? That's my concern right now, because I feel like if you're going man at arms here, you're playing into Marine Lord's strengths, because he can build them too. The difference being that he will get Yam movement speed. Oh, let's take a look about that. Right now, he doesn't have the greatest amount of towers in the center. Certainly needs one, two in the Stars Forest there. Nice sneaky tower. Not sure if Viper will be able to reach the villager. At least he could pull some. Now some raid against the villagers here. And Viper, not the greatest control. Now tries to get some upgrades. Double Blacksmith setup. Yeah, he knows he needs the tech advantage. We just highlight, I just highlight the difference, right? The Yam movement speed gives an edge to your opponent. So if you're playing Mirror pieces, right, with the archers and then the man at arms. You need every crying battle cry you can get, right? Everything in your favor, basically. I don't know why it's a crying battle cry, but it is. Nice to know on this outpost, though. This is important. The movement speed is really what's going to break this game, especially considering Marine Lord can beat your composition and he can do anything you can do, but slightly better with these towers in place. Let's take a look. Man at arm count. Okay-ish for now. And we see Marine Lord going for two as well. Only one crossbow himself. Viper should easily be defending this one. The question is though, who's scaling better? Both with two TCs. Economy wow. should be similar. And we also had improved siege engineering. This this one, it sounds so weird, but doesn't feel far from a mirror map. It's really, it doesn't feel mirror different, right? Because the, we talked about these pass fight timings. When they both get castle, they play the same. Usually, these civs play the exact same game due to their ability to build siege in the field. The problem is, of course, that the Mongols have a natural edge there because of the Yam network. However, if you're quick and more efficient with your economy, you can afford these Maganels ahead of your opponent, and that's the difference maker. The issue, however, that I see is because Marine Lord went into archers heavily, you can't counterfeit your building force in your front line. You can't go for spears. You need to get man arms in the front line, and they're a lot more pricey. I think if these archers weren't here, Viper would have a clear edge right now because he would just Zerg Spearmen that get Phalanx so they're more effective than their opponent. And he would also have surplus resources to build additional siege over that of Marine Lord. But as it stands, M Lord's economy is a little bit stronger and it means that he should keep siege advantage in the next coming minutes. Now first Imam coming out as well, tries to get some of, or Shaman, tries to get some of that relic control. Viper now goes for fast production, mainly crossbows. No more military production by Marine Lord. Floating quite some resources. A bit surprised by that. Maybe building a market could help him out, balance his economy a bit better. I think he's fine, though. Like, if you look at the numbers, his wood is much higher. So he's going to stabilize, and then he'll produce more of his siege. I think the limitation right now for Marine Lord is he needs more troops in the field to build siege faster, right? Like, he can only surround one, mainly. So he's kind of gate kept by the weirdest element here because usually the issue for the Mongols is they don't have enough resources to build more siege not they don't have enough people to build the siege <laughs> uh, more towers I really like the setup here Piper wow. where are his other gold spots has one in the center in the front that he kind of abandoned and I can see KP is craw crawling into I'm the I'm squinting in my eyes let me just I'm doing the ring I'm going to crawl out your monitor in a sec because if I look this is terrible, actually. <laughs> like, gold is very limited for him. I think his TC is right next to one, so that's going to pad him a little bit. But in the mid game, Marine Lord, because he has mid map control as well, he has all the gold. Yeah, there's no gold there. I just imagined that. Because that's how bad it looks. I had to fabricate gold existence 
into being for Viper, as he has barely any available to him. Meanwhile, the big gold veins are very accessible, especially because of the way Marine Lord establishes base. Because he's south the second TC to the north, he's really close to that fat gold vein. So it won't take him long to shift in position. Feels like Viper only spawned with two gold spots on this map. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of wacky, because usually the way we were seeing this play out, if Viper was able to keep that continuous of aggression, it wouldn't have mattered. But now it's everything. Ooh, there's the third one. There okay, we go. Okay, he can go for it. Okay. But it's still just spread out baby veins, right? And one's already being pressured. You can see like these, this poke and prod at the outpost. And that is exactly why Viper is establishing his own outpost. He can't let Marine Lord keep snaking in because when these Springholds are in range of those outposts, they are able to snipe a villager and disengage before they get punished. Marine Lord slipped a bit of macro. There's now six villagers behind, although both players should be still on two town centers. I'm surprised if the Viper was going for a third one. Oh, oh this could be a big attack. Mangano shots could be crucial. Maybe a better Ooh. wood line. And Springles. Oh, shots coming in, though. Springles, the difference maker. And no Viper out position with zone. And the edge is there. Marine Lord can now trade out efficiently. The Archer count. Not necessarily in his favor due to the frontline of Man at Arms being harder and stronger for Viper, but with the Spiral still standing, he now has the edge. Needs to back up. Yeah, movement speed will get him out and away. He has to sacrifice the Man at Arms to retreat, but the trade is worth it. So much siege dead for Viper, and so much still private for Marine Lord. And now those Spriggles turn into infantry snipers because these archers have no resistance against giant ballistas being fired at their face. Yeah, it would be pretty unreasonable if they did, and they're just two, getting two shot there, and that was a beautiful engagement for Marine Lord. Just took out the Springles so much earlier, instantly got rid of the Mangonel, therefore Viper had to snipe the Mangonel first, and then lost the Springles fight after this one. Viper is now trying to get up onto numbers again, but only two Springles won't be enough. Marine Lord should stay can. ahead. Yeah, he needs to make sure he keeps vision. the Scouting Falcon here. The Scouting Falcon can be big. Oh, the snipe out. Getting rid of him before Spirit can find value in the Maganel. That's going to force Viper away. Instead, he goes in, though. Sees an opportunity to snipe out one to the Springle. But he cannot access the Maganel. It's protected. The archers have surrounded it. The Maganel will fire at the ranged battalion on the other side. And although the Man at Arms take a lot of shots to die, there is enough archers here to clean them up. Crossbow count was simply pretty low. Normally you have crossbows behind the siege, but it's mainly archers, and that's why those men at arms are so efficient. Viper, with the beautiful judge of the situation, found quite some army, but still the loser of this fight, Springled Tower there, still doing quite some damage. But Marine Lord, master of that hill, at least for now. Yeah, he's going to lay claim to it, and also the Relic next to it as he starts to just juice his economy up. Now that's going to be the third one in his banking, and you can always see Marine Lord. He's looking to open a Swiss bank account. Over 2,000 surplus gold and wood, in fact. So a lot more comfortable with the sea trade. Viper, on the other hand, is drained dry. He's going to run out of wood and gold fast. Those are the things that we highlight, and he's really not gathering enough of it as it currently stands. And okay, well, the resource of Marine Lord. That's Could what I mean. Solid eight more spring yields on the map. Oh, goddy, 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 goddy. He could just rebuild, 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 right? Like, he's just like, okay, now we've traded. I'm just going to build a dozen more. But it seems for some reason he didn't want to peel back at any point. And it means that Viper can go on the aggressive. But his limitation is he doesn't have the wood to instantly build siege. Unlike Marine Lord, who has fallen back to set up traps. Viper is 20 pop ahead. After it was even for such a long time. I'm really surprised. And again, Marine Lord with a very early prayer tent. Got quite some control. Viper only down by one. And now the big tech switch. Oh. Is this... Lance or is this, or is this, this horseman? This should be Lancers. There's no reason to not build Lancers. Your opponent has been forced to respond with Man at Arms and Archers because of the composition you've done. Viper, if we check his vision, he has a scout around the back. I don't know if he's going to see this, though. It's critical that he gets the information. That's actually a Man at Arms oh. attack. So he will not see this at all. He'll be too busy braiding, and it means that Marine Lord might be able to reach a critical mass of Lancers to win the central fight. Horseman upgrade for now, and look at that, 900 stone as well, Marine Lord, he could go for a wild composition here, still didn't decide, still didn't queue up anything, Viper now getting some sacred side control for himself, Viper just barely not scouting it, still no commitment by Marine Lord, does, does he want to go in <laughs> first? No, it's, it's the full horseman play. It's, yeah, Viper, it's kind though. of perplexing to look at, right? Like, all that wood, it's like, where did the wood go? <laughs> all this gold and, and food, you're like, is he thinking about it? But no, there you go. It's going to be the horseman, so he just wants to body his opponent. It's a solid solution, actually. Like, the lancers are nice, but the horsemen are faster. And also, they take less time to produce. So you're able to reach that critical mass quicker. I think Marine Lord is playing on vision to get a 
big edge in the initial fight that just dominates the game. Like, if he does this correctly and it isn't spotted and he gets up, like, 15 horsemen without Viper knowing, Viper isn't going to have time to transition. However, Viper he he has at least got some spears. Up to yes. seven right now. Yeah, and in another volley in the queue there, as you can see, four more coming out. He knows exactly, wow, okay. My army would be vulnerable to lances or horsemen, even more horsemen. And that's why I transition and already set myself up. Now 100 villagers to 80 villagers. Whoops. Gets a snipe there against the trap. Viper with some beautiful moves and some nice anticipation. Yeah, these are poopy traps, not big boy traps. 13 tower range instead of the 16, so easily snipeable if you're not paying attention. A little bit less pricey, but I, I feel like I'd rather pay the full price. Honestly, if, if Mongol players could build counterweight trebuchets instead, they would. They're just so much better. A frustrating situation as there's just a freebie being traded out and the fight in the center, this would not be good for Marine Lord. Marine Lord is wrapping around right now, but the Maganels need to find Bang for Buck. He's be forced to retreat and you see the numbers not in his favor. The Horsemen go, go for the raid, but Viper is so strong economically, he will care little here. Maganel forced to fire again. Shots out onto the archers at the back here, trying to hold the front line so they don't get access to the single Maganel. And Marine Lord living on a hope and prayer here, but the Spirals will take it out. Trades at the end of the siege lines will go the way of Marine Lord, but the front lines are the difference here. And Marine Lord, because he switched into the crossbows now, he's getting those favorable trades. With a 50-50 split of archers and crossbows, he can clean up the front line and still have the edge courtesy of all these outposts with upgraded spring ults. What a beautiful engagement here by the Viper. Was lacking some units at some point, but still good, took the good fight. Both now reset on siege count, kind of. Still oh a bit God. left for the Viper. And big raids coming in, but Spearman there for the defense as well. Viper will be fine. And still a solid 20 population lead. More towers, more horsemen being wasted against the Spearman, though. Yeah, but the front line isn't strong. There's barely any spears here. There's enough archers to clean them up. The horsemen will die first. But the difference maker is that you can't gain any ground. Both sides have turned this into no man's land, courtesy of the outpost with the Springwood upgrades. Oh, that tower is still without an upgrade or without an emplacement. More horsemen trying to find some raids. Marine Lord still so much stone floating. <laughs> not getting the Springles, not really using it for his horseman production. I'm a bit surprised. And Viper, look at his resources. Is he imping this? I, he might be considering it, but Marine Lord can beat him to it. The amount of gold he's extracting right now. Marine Lord needs to play for the north side of the map, actually. If he carves up that territory, he'll be able to move to the gold vein, and that'll sustain him. And then he can actually trade directly for the food. But right now, did he just buy gold with food? So it looked sure. like it for a second. He might have just invest it in horsemen instead, but this number's getting absurd. Marine Lord really is the Smeagol of Dry Arabia, isn't he? 4,000 <laughs> gold in reserve. It, it truly is as precious. But that's uh -oh. an army without any spearman support. So, yeah, Marine Lords, uh, just like in the opening of the third one. Um, getting quite some kills here. And now we see spearmen arriving, but dying against the archers. That is a nice fight for Marine Lord. Viper sending in over more, but getting completely cleared up. Uh, yep, he's going to be ran down now. Now the outpost will give him a soft reset. The army's still going to be turned and burned. No way to protect it. Horsemen on top of the villages and they're raiding again. And the Spearmen too slow to pursue. They'll shift past, go deeper, and there's plenty of blue shirts to attack here. It feels like it should be the other way around if we're Star Trek fans. Because really, these are the expendables. They just die so easily and Viper <laughs> is fully exposed. He never protected himself. He never walled on the north and south side. Uh oh, um, tries to go for more towers, and that's something that B Security, for example, would play completely differently, right? You know, he would have walled up bottom, would have walled up the side, would not allow those horsemen raids to come in, and then maybe had to spear him in better to protect the center. Viper was 30 pop ahead, now he's slightly behind, still wow. trying to put out some fires, but Marino is getting in beautiful raids, and now a defensive keep here for Viper. He wants this to stop. Viper is like, will this be the one that my teammate usually drops or will this be a very good keep? We'll find out. A lot of villagers coming out. No Maganels in position to counter them. And it means it's likely to go up. Only one trebuchet. Marine Lord distracted for the moment. The horseman out of position and slowly riding across in an intimidating formation there. Instead of charging in, they'll finally move forward. But the keep should be established. Central control will be reconvened by Viper. But what will be the price? There's not enough room for the villagers by the looks of it. Some of them are going to go down as he hasn't even garrisoned yet. More eco units being hemorrhaged by the snake. Oh, 
solid defense so far but yeah indeed some villagers had to die for that keep to go up still quite aggressive here viper is trying to change this one pretty long drawn out castle age fight villager count now relatively even courtesy of all those beautiful raids of marine lord with his horsemen over and over again yeah, it's almost like Viper's looked and gone, well, if the President of the United States can't get a simple wall built, what hope have I? I think you should try, though. <laughs> because... Well, who's even paying for the, it? <laughs> the, the, the Abbasid people, but as we said, they're malnourished. They're way too hungry to care what they're paying for, okay? He can afford it. He needs it. Because every time, even though it's smaller groups of horsemen, it's still stinging. It's still stunning his economy. And it matters more as Marine Lord is starting to even it up almost at the 100 eco mark himself. Viper has no resources in the bank. Such a crazy macro, while Marine Lord completely floating. That's just like, it shows you how good the Viper is in his macro, how he's getting stuff done, and it's just impressive. While well, we see, well, still on the step right out there, nicely in the back, controlling that area quite nicely. And as you said earlier, Viper still so open to raids. We'll take a good fight here, though. Oh, is it going to be a good fight though? The horsemen peel back and that reveals it all to the archers. He's just peppering him down right now. Marine Lord seems to be on the don't spend gold challenge. And so far, it's looking even. Imagine, if you would, a world in which Marine Lord spends his 5,000 gold. Does this even look close anymore? Well, depends on what, right? But could easily go in age, could easily go... I don't know, an additional like 20, 30 lancers and go for massive raids again. I think Im could have been so good for him. Better towers. Look at the stone floating as well. And I think now oh. we finally used the market. Oh. oh, oh, here it comes. Look at the numbers. Marine Lord, he wants Imperial Age. He's saving up. He's been a good boy. And he's hoping Santa's going to deliver something nice for Christmas. And because the fights are weakening from Viper, he knows he can afford to do it without being exposed. This, I, I don't think you needed 4,000 gold to do this. But somehow, <laughs> this is turning into an optimal strategy out of Marine Lord. Ah, White Stupa being dropped, wants to get more of that stone. Feels like the best landmark right now. Now the traps to counter the traps of Marine Lord, still going for some aggression. But Marine Lord, heavy losses, had to balance his economy. Macro slipped a bit. Viper with a solid population lead. And he's continuing to contest this one in Castle Age, as we can see. And that should be winning army. 45 military Ooh. against double of that oh. from the Viper. The timing on this as well. He's going to run in and spot the tech up because there's no outposts here. He was rebuilding them. There's a breach point. He needs to be fast, though. The weakness of what Viper's done here is because he's playing the Abbasids, he cannot build trebs in the field. So he doesn't have long-range siege, but he does have the ability to Zerg Maganels. He just needs to sort his eco to do so. Strong force for the moment. Counter Maganels coming out, and this is the weakness. You're in a matchup where siege dictates everything, and still, all this time, Marine Lord maintains that lead, and now he's going to have a clear economical and technological lead, because straight into the tech up, shutter triggers improved, means that your Surreals cannot counter it. Now, Viper is the one who needs to transition. Now, he is the one who needs to discover that technology called horses. Oh, those traps pretty ambitious at the front that army still not upgraded so what are we really going to achieve for that one viper still feels like he can take some of those fights and that army looks scary i mean it's it, not an imp army it, it's not an imp army and small raids in on the side horsemen not doing good trades right now but it's the critical mass in the center they haven't been upgraded yet but the golden hats are coming soon elite crossbows and elite archers will be there and when they are these trades will not look even anymore viper he needs some decisive hits with his maganels if he wants to turn this battle around i'm really not not giving it to him drops down to fewer than 40 military units though upgrade to elite soon finishes or it can be maybe get the kill against the archer range there viper not committing so likely to go through if only he knew. But Viper, he needs to find the eco lines. If he does that, he turns this game around because he's now teching up himself. And if he finds an eco line and shuts it down, he's playing from a position of strength because the weakness of Marine Lord right now is his wood. Wood is needed in quantity right now. After all the surplus resource he's been floating for so long, and now also less surplus resource as the gold is going to just leak out of the map. No more passive generation there. And he's found it as well. This is perfect from Viper. Moves through. Outpost being targeted down. We'll get rid of them and force the villagers away. Marine Lord's economy is grinding to a halt at a fragile state. He's probably going to have to buy into the wood just to get the siege necessary to deal with this plumped infantry formation. This is so risky. They're at the edge of the map. <laughs> they can't get further off the map than this. Oh, no. There's too many of them. They're going to reveal. Oh, and Viper, he sees that. There's no way he hasn't spotted that. He's going to move in. And that is going to be a lot of dead villagers from Marine Lord. 
Oh, he saw what? 30 villagers running no away, way. right? Even if he doesn't want it. What? 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 It's like, no. You, you saw them. I saw, I, I put them in the corner. Anything more than that is bullying. Viper, he's not a bully. He will back away. It seems he's content with this right now, but should he be? His tech up is about to be complete, but that does mean you're now showing weakness the other way. As Marine Lord will spot that you do not have surplus military because you just paid a phenomenal 3.6k resources into teching up instead. Okay, Viper needs to sit back, needs to get his upgrades, get solid sprinkle count again. But it's not really an option. If he is pop 200, his opponent is sitting at 140, to not attack, to not put on the pressure, to chill back, because then you're getting closer to the 200 v 200 while you're still trying to catch up. And that's what he is realizing, and that's why he's charging in for another attack. And this keep has been phenomenal for Viper. Marine Lord stopped investing the horseman. He hasn't been raiding anymore, and that's why this is turning around. Viper's economy is recovered, and he's not suffering strikes on the side anymore. He's not throwing slow moving military units back to repulse that. He's not losing villages at the back. Instead, the fight has been condensed to the center, and in this situation, Marine Lord's composition doesn't make sense anymore. Okay, <laughs> might want to pick those up. <laughs> Maybe if I just park the relics nearby, they'll, they'll generate. Oh, the bombard! Whoopsie! That's a freebie. And that's a pricey freebie. Viper wow. has to be too happy about that. Look at that amount of archers there for the Viper in the back. Mangonel will get another shot off. No, Woe and oh, the Springles will find no. the kill. And the archers are now coming out. And you know what the difference maker is? Viper, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but composite bow technology might be a game winner here because they're both <laughs> playing heavy archer compositions. Absolutely crazy, increases his efficiency there, and yeah, I don't really think Marine Lord could even hold without the upgrade. Look at that, Marine Lord now goes for the bounty upgrade? He's not killing <laughs> any buildings! Uh, okay, he, he's the one on the back foot. Here's what you do, your Marine Lord, you're playing as the Mongols, your late game situation, uh, you're floating over a thousand stone, build outposts. Mm -hmm. Get bomb bombard upgrade, like cannons in them, quickly. Do it. Just zerg the field without post, because right now you're not winning these archer fights anymore. This is the concerning fact that is that, for those who don't know what I was talking about with composite bows, because we rarely ever talk about or see it, it's a 25% improvement on your reload rate for your archers. So they fire quicker. They turn into pupu lads very fast. And yeah, so on top of that, like there's some other research techs being taken, but the composite bow one is, is phenomenal in the archery range. Like it's, it's rare we get to see it. But when it gets to be fielded in a fight where both players are relying on archers, it will be the difference maker that breaks your opponent. Wasn't there a bug where that in combination with the university tech slowed it, it actually right? doesn't stack up or something? I think so, but I'm not sure if they fixed it because who, who gets composite? <laughs> Whoever builds archers yeah. in Imperial Age? Apparently both players here, but that never happens. Oh, now pushing back Marine Lord on his last chance here to holding this one. 40 military against 60. So Viper dropping quite heavily, eating some short sprinkles, still taking quite some reasonable fights. Marine Lord obviously with the range advantage, but military is dropping so heavily now. Viper continues to push in. <laughs> one hand cannon here to hold them all back. I'm afraid that won't do, Marine Lord. Uh, that technological okay. advantage won't give you the edge. The archers are going to ride away because Marine Lord trying to switch this around now. The lance is being pushed out. His opponent heavily invested in only archers, which means that this army is going to be cleaned up. But afterwards, can he push in is the question. He glances. Oh, another keep. The first keep already, as we pointed out, was really good. Gave oh, this him one's quite some control, and this one leaves. Yeah, this, so good. this is the only thing he needs right now, right, Nilly? He's got two sacred sites. He's had them for ages. And right now, Marine Lord is budgeted. Look at his gold. You wouldn't believe that this guy was doing the <laughs> hoard gold challenge because he's ran out oh, and he still no. hasn't bagged the relics. Oh no. Oh. How long has that been? That's been at least like, what, four minutes? I feel yeah, like. Something like that. Could have been 1200 gold quite easily just with one single focus on that one. But obviously, so much going on. Viper so aggressive, so active with his raids. How, when was the last time we saw Spearmen finding kills that late into this game and constantly in this game? Well, in this game specifically, we wouldn't have expected the way it was going, but like usually that's the composition late game, right? Spears. It was almost like both players said this might take an hour and we might just build spears. So they both try to get ahead of the curve and build archers instead. But if you get baited into that, Actually, the Abbasids have the advantage because of the tech upgrades we talked about. Phalanx and composite bows. This actually makes, in this composition, 
the Abassi is about twice as effective as the Mongols. And it's why we're seeing him win these fights pretty decisively every time. And we're seeing Marino get desperate. He needs gold, and he needs to earn this step readout on the gold vein in the center, which is why he's fighting here, trying to hold his opponent back. Archer shot's coming out, but the Flame and Arrow upgrades are also there for Viper. Going to push his opponent away, deny him on the gold, and that's something Marino cannot afford. He's below 100 gold in surplus, and that income per minute is about to go down to zero. This lad might need to apply for benefits. Oh man, Khan goes down now as well, the last hero here for Marine Lord, now pushes back onto that gold, feels like he's holding this one, that's a bit of a misjudgment, tries to put out another, another tower, and it just feels like Marine Lord at the top, as you can see, still holding that one single relic, now 70 population behind, and, and taps this one out, Viper takes 1-0 lead. What? A dominant display from Viper here. Marine Lord looking economically superior, but with all this money and no way to seemingly spend it, Viper, he's the efficient boy. He makes sure he puts it all to good work, he gets the counters out, and more importantly, when he comes to claim territory, he stakes a claim that is unbreakable. Marine Lord baited into that center fight, put him at a distinct disadvantage, and gives Viper a dominant opening game here in the lower bracket best of three. Let's quick at gold count. Look at that. He was at 5.3k <laughs> gold mm. and then spent it quite nicely for sure. Stone count obviously was floating around 1k stone as well. Wow. And we saw Viper just dropping some keeps and that's why those nice moves. So what a crazy good game. If we look at the gold gathered, uh, it's almost even, but that surplus really is the difference. I, I think Marine Lord has misunderstood the rules of these rounds. So this is the open battlefield round, folks. It just means that you play on open battlefields. I think he thinks Golden League is the challenge. And it's who can hoard 10k gold first because it looked like he was just going for that. Like the, he was holding on to gold for so long that I thought it was to set up a transition and bait Viper in. And then the transition he makes doesn't even need gold, right? Because he went for the horseman. The weird part is he stopped going for the horseman, despite the fact that Viper never built wolves. And I think that's maybe the difference maker here. He got baited into the main fight. Viper was getting a little bit too close to his base. 